Uh, well, thank you very much for your introduction and also thank you very much for inviting me to be here today. This is a really great initiative and I'm very happy to, to be talking here today. So as Max said, today I'm going to tell you about <coughs> sorry, one of the most important parts of my PhD thesis, which was a functional and evolutionary characterization of unknown genes from uncultivated taxa. And I'm going to start this presentation by explaining why these unknown genes from uncultivated taxa are important to characterize. So ever since the beginning of genome sequencing, we've been able to, to recover the genomes and the genes from microbes that we were able to, to cultivate. And all these genomes included a lot of genes that were unknown. And actually understanding the function or, or the roles of these unknown genes has been a priority of biology ever since, because they may be performing very important roles that we are uh, missing. And for doing this characterization, there have been two uh, important approaches. One has been doing experiments in order to see what may be the function of these genes. And the second has been a computational analysis, mainly comparative uh, genomics analysis, which um, enlighten the evolutionary history of these unknown genes and which provide a lot of very relevant information. However, with uh, genome sequencing, we can only access the genomes of cultivated species, and that's the minority of the species who are not able to culture most of the microbial diversity. This changed with metagenomics, which is a technique that allows us to uh, sequence DNA directly from environmental samples without the need for previous cultivation and provided us access to the genes of uncultivated uh, species for the first time. This, of course, meant that <clears throat> we had access to a lot of uh, unknown genes from these uncultivated species. And these genes may be uh, very interesting as well. However, they are more difficult to, to characterize. And this is the case because they come from uncultivated species, so we cannot make experiments with them so easily. And also computationally, uh, it was more, more difficult to, to analyze them. However, uh, we claim here that we have now the tools for doing comparative genomics analysis on these uh, possibly very important unknown genes from uncultivated species um, in a similar way as we do for genomes of cultivated species. And this is the case because we can now have a metagenome assembled genome with very high quality, so we can recover genomes from metagenomic data. And uh, we have uh, the tools, for example, MM6, for uh, building gene families on large metagenomics data. So the objective of this work was uh, to understand the importance of these unknown genes from uncultivated species that we can see in metagenomic data by applying comparative genomics technique uh, on this metagenomic uh, data. And this is a summary of how we did it. So we, what we did was we first <coughs> gathered a lot of, or we got a lot of genomes from different public repositories, mostly max from uncultivated species. We predicted genes on these genomes, and then we built uh, gene families with uh, MM6. And we, then with these gene families, uh, we were able to perform all this comparative genomics analysis I was, I was mentioning before. And then what we did was mapping these gene families against reference databases, because these databases, they only contain sequences from cultivated species. So by doing this, we could discard gene families from cultivated species and focus only on those families which were exclusive of uncultivated taxa, which were the ones that we actually wanted to, to understand better. So after doing this, we ended up with a collection of normal gene families from uncultivated species. And uh, what we did next was running a lot of uh, different filters in order to make sure that the, fraction or that the novel gene families that we were going to analyze were uh, of high quality or were uh, biologically relevant. And after doing this, we ended up with a collection of more than 400,000 novel gene families. And this is a huge uh, number. For example, this is the gene length distribution of ECNO, which is a database which should uh, have all the gene families from cultivated species. And this is now the gene length distribution of the novel gene families that we identified here. So as you can see, we have almost twice the size uh, as the gene families in ECNO. So we have really a lot of uh, unknown genes from uncultivated species, which uh, made very, very strict, strict quality filters. So uh, we wanted to characterize them, as I was mentioned before, uh, thanks to comparative genomics, and we did uh, an evolutionary and a functional characterization of these gene families. From an evolutionary point of view, uh, this in this figure that we have is the, how the novel gene family is distributed across the prokaryotic tree of life. 
So uh, red lines indicate the no number of novel gene families per genome in different prokaryotic uh, lineages. And as you can see, uh, the novel gene families, they are widely distributed across the, the tree of life. Uh, with, uh, and they are especially present in, in very uncultivated or in lineages that we are not, not able to, to cultivate, which makes sense, of course, but was, well, sorry. But what was really striking was to see that there were some particular uh, lineages which were highly enriched in these novel families, and th these are the ones that we highlighted uh, in the in the figure. So there are so there are some um, lineages that seem to be hubs for a uh, microbial of or for genetic novelty. <coughs> uh, sorry, and and also. Um, uh, what we are uh, another very important or very striking finding that we did was that there are all, uh, almost 1,000 nodium families which are xenopomorphic of entire entire phyla classes and others, uh, and that means that these gene families they are very specific of particular uh, lineages, but they are widely distributed within that lineage. For example, here the the white in the figure on the left and uh, the white uh, gene family would be xenomorphic of the blue lineage because it is present in all the genomes from that lineage, but it's not present anywhere else. And this means that these novel gene families may have been very important for the evolution of these uh, deep nodes of the tree of life and be maybe therefore very important from an evolutionary point of view. And we also observed, and that's what we show in the figure on the on the right, that these xenomorphic deep families, they have lower the NDS values, meaning that, that there is a, a stronger negative selection acting on them than on the rest of gene families. So uh, we can say that the uh, novel gene families are relevant from an evolutionary point of view. Now we wanted to know whether they are relevant from a functional point of view. And for doing this, we uh, reconstructed the genomic context of these novel gene families and we made advantage of the fact that prokaryotic genomes are very compact and that genes that uh, make the same function usually cluster together in the genome. So we found a novel gene family in a conserved genomic context with a particular non-function gene. We are able to say that uh, this uh, novel gene family may be doing something similar as the non-function gene, or at least in the same pathway. And we counted how many novel gene families are in this situation, and there's around 20% of the gene families which are in context genomic, uh, in conserved genomic context with non-function genes, meaning they are possibly involved in this in, in known pathways <clears throat> and there's actually 1.5 thousand that share genomic, genomic context with very important metabolic marker genes for example in this figure here we show you know, uh, how we found novel gene families next to genes involved in almost all steps of the natural gene cycle but we also found novel gene families in other uh, very relevant uh, genomic context for example surrounded by antibiotic resistant genes uh, and we, we found a lot of gene families which were very, very promising and which may be involved in very relevant, uh, <clears throat> in very relevant genomic you know, context. And we were very excited about all this that I was uh, mentioning you and we actually wanted to be able to, to characterize all these novel gene families in detail. So for doing this, what we did, uh, what we did was uh, we built a database with all this uh, information and then we, um, we built a resource uh, so that we, in order to explore all this information. And here's a short demo on how the resource works. So here's the welcome page, and there you can, you have all the, the most striking findings. For example, xenomorphic families and gene families next to marker genes. And the most interesting thing here is that you can look for a particular known functions, for example, kehorthologies here, and the resource will tell you which novel gene families are in concept genomic context with this particular known function. And then you can explore all these novel gene families. You can uh, interact with their genomic context, see how, what their neighbors look like, uh, what's the function of their neighbors. You can color by different databases. You can play around a lot with, with this. You can also see whether they have transmembrane domains. You can also see in which species they are present. And you can also see in which habitats we detected. Uh, so uh, with this, we hope to, to help uh, people um, and characterize these uh, Nobudium families better. So uh, as a summary, uh, I would like to highlight that there seems to be a lot of uh, uh, unknown genes from uncultivated species out there. Uh, and these unknown genes from uncultivated species, they seem to be uh, very relevant from an evolutionary perspective. For example, 
there are a lot with, uh, which are anapomorphic of very deep nodes uh, of the tree of life. And uh, they are also they also seem to be functionally relevant because they are in conserved genomic context with very important genes. And finally, that we have created an online tool for uh, making their characterization more more easy. And with that, I would I would like to to thank all, all, all the people involved in this project, mostly from the comparative genomics and metagenomics groups in the CVGP, and especially my PhD supervisor, uh, Jaime Huerta, and of course, all, all the rest of, of collaborators, and thank, thank you for, for your attention. <laughs>